Hi students, as per the syllabus of this subject, Environmental Impact Assessment, till now we were discussing about different types of pollutions, pollutants, its causes and impacts on environment. And now our topic of discussion is Environmental Impact Assessment, EIA. We all know that human well-being is closely connected to environmental sustainability. As a result, all these forms of human development such as building infrastructures have an impact on surrounding natural environment and vice versa. EIA is one of the environmental assessment tools being used worldwide. EIA provides decision makers and concerned public with essential information to plan for environmentally sustainable economic development. So, as I mentioned, environmental impact assessment is a tool to anticipate the likely environment impacts that may arise out of the proposed developmental activities and suggest mitigation measures and strategies. There are different types of developmental activities and all those activities have its own potential risks. EIA is designed to identify such potential risk of a particular project to environmental and human well-being and identify measures to eliminate these risks. This can be done by uh, replacing or modifying planned activities to reduce impacts. Uh, EIA can be defined as the systematic examination of unintended consequences of a development project or program with the view to reduce or mitigate negative impacts and maximize on positive ones. So, EIA is based on predictions. The study therefore requires a multidisciplinary approach and should be done very early at the feasibility stage of a project. In a way, we can say that uh, a project should be assessed for its environmental feasibility. EIA should therefore be viewed as an integral part of the project planning process. I hope it's clear that what is an EIA. So we will look into the objectives of EIA. The objectives of EIA are to identify, predict and evaluate economic, environmental and social impact of development activities. Uh, to provide information on environmental consequences for decision making and to promote environmentally sound and suitable development by identifying appropriate alternatives and mitigation measures. These are the objectives of EIA. EIA are carried out in wide variety of sectors including agriculture, manufacturing, tourism, mining, forestries, etc. Uh, projects requiring an EIA can be large such as hydroelectric dam or even small such as a new hotel on a beach side. However, the level of impact on human and environmental health is the most important aspect of decision making on the need for an EIA rather than the size of the project. In India, EIA was introduced in 1978 with respect to river valley projects. Later, the EIA legislation was enhanced to include other development sections also. EIA comes under notifications on Environmental Impact Assessment of Developmental Projects, 1994. 
under the provisions of Environmental Protection Act, 1986. Uh, besides EIA, uh, the Government of India under Environmental Protection Act, 1986, issued a number of other notifications uh, which are related to uh, environmental impact assessment. Uh, now, EIA is mandatory for more than 30 categories of projects and these projects get environmental clearance only after EIA requirements are fulfilled. Uh, as I mentioned, there are number of uh, categories of projects, more than 30 categories. Uh, let me tell you some examples of these projects. Uh, you can say that uh, nuclear power plant and related projects, thermal power plants, mining projects, uh, ports, harbors, airports, uh, tarred roads in Himalayas and forest areas, even primary metallurgical industries, etc. For these type of projects, nowadays EIA is mandatory. In the EIA process, a range of organization may be involved, uh, including government agencies, developers, and non-governmental and public organization. The level of involvement may vary significantly depend on the type of the project that is assessed. Anyway, the process of EIA comprises number of different stages. And these stages of EIA may be labeled differently in different parts of the world, but their goals are similar. Uh, any EIA consists of three key stages. The first stage is called screening. It's a preliminary assessment stage which involves the identification and collection of relevant information. During this step, the decision is made on whether an EIA is required for the project. If an EIA is required, then the second stage starts. The second stage called scoping. Scoping identifies uh, what constitutes relevant information to be identified and assessed with respect to key impacts of proposed development. There will be different proposed developments and what all information, relevant information are to be identified or assessed is identified in this stage only. The result from the scoping process are reported to relevant decision makers. There will be some decision makers and uh, in a form of environmental impact assessment the report will be on the basis of some statements and it is called Environmental Impact Statement, EIS. The final stage comprises the review of the EIS and its adequacy as a basis for approving authority to make the decision on development conditions. Anyway, the ultimate audience of the EIA report is decision makers. The final product of an EIA is an environmental statement, as I already mentioned, EIS or report that provides clear, understandable, relevant information to influence final decision on the development project. Now let us look at some benefits of EIA process. The EIA process potentially screens out environmentally unsound projects and it identifies feasible alternatives. It helps to predict significant adverse impacts. It proposes modified designs to reduce environmental impacts. It also helps to identify mitigation measures to reduce or eliminate major impacts. 
it engages and informs potentially affected communities and individuals eia process influences decision making and the development of terms and conditions as the human population continues to increase and natural resources become more limited the importance of improving the sustainability of development and identifying mitigation measures is essential and thus the importance of creating high quality eias become greater hope you understand about eia and need of an eia in our next module we will be discussing the whole procedure for conducting eia in detail manner thank you